Hi, I'm Jeremy Steinberger, and I'm going to be describing a new technology that we have at Mount Sinai called 7D, and it's efficient radiation-free navigation. We acquired this about one year ago, and since we adopted it, we have 19 surgeons using it. We are the first healthcare system in the nation to adopt machine learning, machine vision um, on this sort of large scale. And since we started using it, it has taken off. People are seeing the benefits of it, both the surgeons as well as the patients. And uh, that's what I'm gonna be describing today. I have no relevant disclosures to this talk and no disclaimers. Um, I serve as the Director of Minimally Invasive Spine Surgery for Mount Sinai Health Systems Department of Neurosurgery, where we are really building to uh, change the way we do spine surgery and uh, employ new techniques, new technologies to improve patient outcomes. Right now, if you look at what's on the horizon for spine surgery, minimally invasive spine surgery is gathering traction across the country and across the world. Um, surgeries with less blood loss, less length of stay, faster recovery, faster return to work, less opioid use, et cetera, um, are really uh, changing the, the way we do spine surgery. We're also employing virtual reality into our patient encounters in the office. We're employing augmented reality and placing percutaneous screws with a superimposed vision. Um, uh, of the relevant anatomy projected onto our headset. Uh, we're using robotics. We now have a robot at Mount Sinai that's helping us to place screws and do inner body fusion. And I think the one that I'm going to talk about and highlight today is the improved navigation and intraoperative imaging. And there's data to support why we need this. This was a study that showed 9,310 pedicle screws, and they looked at the accuracy with standard fluoroscopy, the accuracy of the pedicle screw was 68%, and it improved to 96% with 3D navigation. This means that we have basically x-ray vision. We can put a probe to the patient and know exactly where we are in space so we can get the perfect screw every time. And at the end of the day, these breaches matter. So 96% versus 68% is a huge difference. If you have a screw that's medial or inferior particularly, you can injure a nerve permanently. So improving accuracy of instrumentation in the operating room is critical and navigation has helped us to get there. There are pros and cons. In an academic setting, we can have better accuracy. We can place bigger and wider screws and we can, in the process of training residents, we have an adjunct to help us do the education part of surgery and training safely. Um, in some instances, we can do less exposure and smaller incisions. We now can do a, a, a one-level spinal fusion through, the through an incision the size of a laminectomy, so an inch and a half. Um, and that's uh, in large part due to these uh, navigation developments. There are some cons. Number one, if you're, everyone is using this technology, are we going to lose the art of placing screws without help and using anatomical landmarks? That is a legitimate concern. And the workaround is that when you use this technology, you look at the screen only after you plan your screw without it. So you can line up your hand, you can line up your trajectory and your angle. You say, I think this looks good. And then you look at the screen and you can say, oh, actually I should be a little bit more lateral or this is perfect. That would have been a good screw either way with or without the navigation. There's also a cost and there's also time. I put a big arrow on time because I think one of the biggest obstructions to using this new technology is that it takes time and, and surgeons and, and, and most people don't want to spend three hours doing a surgery if you could do a surgery in two hours. But that's what makes 7D so special is that it doesn't add time to the surgery. And at least in my experience, it has decreased the amount of time in the operating room. And I'm going to show why that is. This is a, a, a uh, X-ray on the left, CAT scan in the middle, and MRI on the right of a patient who has a very high-grade spondylolisthesis, a slippage of L5 on S1. You can get grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. This is a grade three and a half, uh, which is a significant spondylolisthesis. Basically, the L5 and the rest of the spine is falling off of the sacrum, as you can see here. The ways to fix this, um, there's a lot of different possibilities. The way we chose to fix it is by putting a screw in L4, L5, S1, and into the pelvis. And we used navigation to help us. This patient came in pretty advanced. She had urinary issues. She had right, right leg atrophy, as you see in this picture. And this is what we ended up doing, which is 
a screw into L4, L5, S1 in the pelvis and an interbody fusion at L5, S1. And I think this probably took us about three and a half hours for this complex operation. But I think that the navigation uh, helped us chop an hour off of the surgery. Also gave us really good feedback and confirmation that all of our screws were in the right place and also helped us to do what's called a sacral dome osteotomy, which is a complex, uh, a basically a breakage uh, of the spine to enter the disc space and correct uh, spinal deformities. This is a sample of what it looks like. You're putting a probe into the bone and you're looking live as you're passing your probe into the bone. So you know that you're not getting into the, you're not breaching the pelvis. You're not too lateral, too medial. And also you're, you can use a really long screw. I will say my practice for a pelvic screw was to put in 80 millimeter screws. And now we're routinely putting in hundred millimeter screws, just better anchorage, better strength to the screw, better width and diameter to screw as well. It's fast, it's efficient. And most of all, most important of all, there's no radiation to the patient. So without the 7D technology, a lot of what, a lot of the times what we do is we take an intraoperative CAT scan. Once we do the intraoperative CAT scan, we link the patient's intraoperative CAT scan to the navigation screen, which links the patient to their CAT scan. And then you, you have this ability to know where you are in space. With 7D, it links... Uh, it, there's no there's no X-ray or CAT scan in the operating room. You're 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 using this camera, which I'll show in a minute, to take the flash of light, which takes thousands, tens of thousands of fiducial points in space, and that links the patient's preoperative imaging to the intraoperative patient positioning on the table. So basically, we're able to with one flash of light that lasts, I think, 2.4 seconds. We take the flash of light. We get tens of thousands of fiducial points. The patient is linked now to the navigation, and we can we can start. This is fast and efficient. Here's an, a, a few examples of some of the recent surgeries that we've used this technology. This is us putting a, a screw into the pelvis. This is us placing a thoracic pedicle screw. You see the ribs over here, the transverse process, the spinal uh, cord lives in here, and we're cannulating that pedicle with this navigation technique, knowing we're in the perfect place this is placing a C1 lateral mass screw. So in the first cervical vertebrae, there's the vertebral artery that lives in the transverse foramen. There's the spinal cord over here. So you see that basically we need to be in this bony card or between critical structures. And the navigation really helps us to know that we're in the right place with minimal stress, minimal disruption, minimal slowdown in the operating room. Here's another example where we use 7D. This is a 61-year-old female who presented with severe myelopathy. She was unable to walk. She fell frequently. And if you look at her sagittal T2 MRI, she has severe spinal cord compression from C2 to C7. Here you see a very uh, healthy looking spinal cord with spinal fluid in front, spinal fluid in back, healthy looking discs with um, no uh, disc bulging. But up at the upper cervical and lower cervical area, there's severe multi-level spinal cord compression. There's also myelomalacia uh, and injury to the spinal cord and gliosis. So this patient met surgical criteria and she needed a large posterior cervical decompression and fusion. This is before and this is after. So this is the same patient. We remove the bone and ligament in the back and you see how the spinal cord drifts away from the pathology and it's uh, wide open uh, after surgery. There's still myelomalacia of the cord because that's a, the equivalent of uh, damage to the spinal cord. But now the spinal cord is free and she had tremendous relief after surgery. In order to do that, though, we needed to supplement her spine uh, with screws and rods, which is what you see here. And the way we were able to get the thoracic pedicle screws to be absolutely perfect was using the 7D technology. It took us less than one minute per pedicle screw. So um, this was four minutes to place the pedicle screws, which are hardest to place. And the upper cervical screws were placed with freehand techniques as there's less uh, variability and complexity to them. But you can use navigation for that also. She had um, significant impairment and she did quite well after surgery. Uh, I'll transition to another patient who basically had a uh, significant um, weakness of his legs. Um, he had uh, long-standing scoliosis. He failed conservative treatment, including physical therapy and multiple epidural steroid injections. He also had medial branch blocks. He had ablations. He really went through the he, he went through the whole um, the whole the whole cycle. Um, and he presented with back pain, leg pain, and malalignment, and he really couldn't walk more than a few feet. And for the four weeks before surgery, he was 
what he describes as bed bound due to the severe pain he was experiencing. Here is his preoperative x-ray where you see he had a prior fusion done at L4-5, but he has this big uh, coronal tilt to his right side. And he needed a pretty aggressive operation to fix this, but this surgery was done in about four hours and, and, and placing uh, about 18 screws in the spine typically takes longer than that. And we were able to cut time off with no radiation to the patient using 7D technology. Here's the lateral image of the same patient. The way we do this is we take these block registrations. So we take that flash of light and we, it gives us all these points. We correlate sidedness to the technology to make sure that everything's aligning perfectly. One thing we do not do is we don't blindly trust technology. We always have to verify that it's accurate. So as soon as we do this registration, we touch a probe to the patient, we sweep on the laminar, we sweep on the joint, we touch our probe to the transverse processor to a pedicle screw, and we make sure that it's exactly perfectly accurate. That's a really important step because once you know it's accurate, you know you can trust it. Um, and so that's what we did. And then you see here, we're placing all these screws, but each one, you know that you're in the perfect location at every single screw you place. And I think that this is invaluable. It takes a lot of the stress out of the operation. It takes a lot of the, uh, it takes the educated guessing uh, out of the equation because you, you know you're in the right position. So basically, this patient did fantastic. He walked 150 feet the first day after surgery. He walked 400 feet the second day. He had a miraculous feeling that his pain was better as soon as he woke up. Two months later, now it's been about five months later, he has no back or leg pain. He's on the treadmill every day. He's a very active guy, and he's he couldn't be happier. So we have fast navigation that decreases operating room time. It increases accuracy. It improves patient outcomes. This is a first that we're doing at Mount Sinai, and it has revolutionized the way we do spine surgery. And I think it's a really exciting time for everybody. It has been a uh, really rapid growth and evolution, and we're expanding the technology uh, almost weekly. So uh, I thank you for your attention and take care. Bye-bye.